Hello students, my name is Dr. Deepti Marwaha. Today I will be talking to you about transport number. Before that, I would like to specify, if you like my videos, kindly subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notifications of my new updated videos. Okay, now let us start with the topic. Transport number is also called as transference number or Hitoff's number. You are aware about the concept of electrolysis. What happens here? When an electric current is passed, the ions migrate towards the electrodes. During this process, each ion carries a definite fraction of the total current depending upon its speed. So this fraction of the total current carried by an ion is called its transport number. Is it clear? Now let us consider that UA is the speed of an ion and UC is the speed of cation. So accordingly I can say the current carried by the anion is directly proportional to UA and the current carried by the cation is directly proportional to UC. So I can write down the value of transport number as UA upon UA plus UC in respect to transport number of anion. Similarly I can have the value for transport number of cation. What is K here? K is the proportionality constant. When you remove this proportionality sign, so you need to add this constant to it and that is K. In respect to this, you have to remember one important relation that is Na plus Nc is equal to 1. That means transport number of anion and transport number of cation, addition of them comes to be 1. What does it mean? It means that no current is lost in this system. And the whole of the current is carried only by the ions. Which ions? And ions and cations. Clear? Now as far as the determination of transport number is concerned, it can be determined with, by various methods. However, in this video, I will specify to you about the Hitoff's method for determination of transport number. This method is based upon the principle that the fall in concentration around an electrode is proportional to the speed of ion moving away from it. So depending on that principle, I can say fall in concentration around cathode is equal to speed of an ion. Definitely you can understand which are the ions which are going to move away from cathode, those will be anions. And which are the ions which are going to move away from anode, those will be cations. So we will be taking them in the form of a fraction. Further, you can add plus 1 on both the sides. Take the LCM of the uh, LHS as well as RHS and then take the reciprocal of it. So after taking the reciprocal, I am getting this particular equation. That is fall in concentration around anode divided by the total fall in concentration. That means fall in concentration around cathode as well as anode. So that will become UC upon UA plus UC. What is this term? This is equivalent to transport number of cation, right? So I can say transport number of cation in other sense. That is in terms of gram equivalent loss. I can say number of gram equivalent loss from anodic compartment divided by number of gram equivalent loss from both the compartments. This is the other form of transport number of cation. To this, the other form again is if I apply the Faraday's second law of electrolysis. Now what is Faraday's second law of electrolysis? It says when the same quantity of electricity flows through the silver or copper voltameter, the same number of gram equivalents of silver or copper will be deposited. See why we are taking this concept in this particular determination of transport number is because majority of the times it becomes difficult for us from the experimental setup to find out the number of gram equivalents lost from both the compartments. So what we can do is within the experimental setup we can add in series the voltameter. Now this voltameter will be of different types. Suppose you are taking or you are studying silver nitrate solution and you want to find out the number of gram equivalents with reference to the silver ions. So your voltameter will be a silver voltameter. If you are taking copper sulfate as an electrolyte, then your voltameter will be a copper voltameter. So what is going to happen is, whatever the ions lost from both the compartments, those are equivalent to that of deposited within the voltameter. So you can directly take this value, you can find out the weight of the ions deposited in the voltameter 
fill in the denominator in this particular formula and you can get the value for transport number of cation. Is it clear? Now to make it more clear, let us see the figure related. So this is Hitoff's transport number apparatus for determination of transport number. See the apparatus clearly? So we are having the apparatus in the form of a U-tube, a centrally placed U-tube and on the either sides there are vertical glass bulb tubes, right? Now each of the chamber is attached with reference to the cork at the bottom side so that no ions are transferred from one cell to the other cell or one chamber to the other chamber and you can independently judge or find out their concentrations. So the apparatus is now filled with the solution of the electrolyte or the transport number of whose ions you have to determine. So you will fill the apparatus completely with that electrolytic solution. Further, a silver or copper voltameter is placed in series with this apparatus to find out this particular denominator factor that is number of gram equivalent deposited within this voltameter. You can see here voltameter is also referred to as coulometer. This is the other name for voltameter commonly used which is known as coulometer. Now in this case there are two concepts to this experimental setup. So before initiating with the process of electrolysis you have to follow one procedure and after electrolysis is done you have to follow the next procedure. So before electrolysis what you are going to do? We are more concerned about the anodic compartment as it is clear from the uh, formula which is available to us. So this is your anodic chamber, the left hand side and right hand side is the cathodic chamber. So from the anodic compartment, you will be taking some amount of electrolyte, take down properly the concentration of it, then you will find the weight of the solution, uh, weight of the silver, suppose I am talking about silver nitrate electrolytic solution. So I will find out the weight of silver nitrate present within this anodic chamber in the amount I have taken out from the chamber. How can you find it out? With the help of a titration method. Say for example, so if you are using silver nitrate, so I can titrate it against potassium thiocyanate solution and I will be able to find out the weight of silver nitrate present within it, right? Say for example, I take copper sulfate solution, then I can proceed for iodometric titration to find out the weight of that solution, right? After that, the next thing we need to do is, we'll be passing a current, how much current you need to pass? A current of 0.01 to 0.02 amperes is passed for about 2 to 3 hours. Now why such a low amount of current needs to be passed? What is the reason main? That the diffusion, we need to avoid the diffusion which is taking place. What is the concept of diffusion? That is around the electrodes, the concentration can change, right? It can alter drastically. And you don't want the concentration to change drastically. We need to avoid the diffusion. And so we are taking help of low amount of current. Clear? So this was the first setup. The second thing, after you pass the current, your electrolysis is completed. Then again you will take the solution from the anodic compartment, weigh it and then titrate it again in the similar manner. That is against potassium thiocyanate solution. So, you will have the known amount of the electrolyte present after electrolysis, right? Then, what you what you are going to do next is, you will also find out the weight of the silver which is deposited in the silver voltameter, right? And one more thing, for a precautionary case, what you can do is, you will be taking the solution from the central compartment and you will titrate it in the normal sense and just to check that there is no change in concentration, if you find out that before electrolysis, the concentration of the central compartment was different compared to that of after electrolysis, that means some errors are ex existing within your experimental procedure. And in that case, you need to repeat the complete experiment again. As far as the calculations related to this Hitoff method are concerned, that I'll be adding up in the next video. Okay.